Hello everyone, I'm Hazel and welcome to this pick a card reading which is all about what is coming up in the next couple of months if you're getting married. So yeah, if you've got a wedding coming up in the next two to three months, maybe shorter, maybe longer, um, then this pick a card is to see what you can expect, you know, what could be happening um, in the run up to your wedding day and on your wedding day. So as with all readings, not everything may resonate with you. So do take what does and leave what doesn't because it is a general reading. Um, before we get started, if you do like these readings, please give them a thumbs up as it all helps to grow my little channel. I like to post videos on weddings, wedding planning and tarot readings, um, especially if they relate to weddings. So if that's something you're interested in, then please also think about subscribing. I am new to YouTube, so all support is gratefully received. I will post my social media links in the description. Um, I do uh, mindful wedding planning courses. Um, I also make fabric and brooch bouquets. So anything like that, if that's what you're interested in, please do check out the links. I've also got a wedding planning book available, Planning a Wedding the Wedding Planner Way, and links to that um, on Amazon um, and Blurb will be in the description as well. So let's get started so you need to pick a pile first so we've got pile one under the rose quartz pile two is under amethyst and pile three is under the green fluorite so maybe take a few mindful breaths maybe think about the question what can you expect what's going to be coming up for you on your wedding day or in the run-up to your wedding day what can you expect and then see which pile is calling to you so once you've picked your pile I will put the times in the description so you can go to the time for your pile and I will make a start with group one so hello group one and for those of you who picked the rose quartz crystal this is your reading so I've got some tarot cards to start with and then I will finish with um, some oracle cards at the end so we've got the hermit the emperor three of spring nine of spring memories of love the waiting game Obstacles and challenges, victory and success, the wheel of fortune, hierophant, seven of cups, king of swords, the goblin, birth and rebirth, the compass, and coming to life. So let's see what we got. So I feel like there's quite a bit of masculine energy here. Um, we've got the Emperor and the Hierophant and the King of Swords. Um, so maybe there's yeah, kind of a a male presence. So maybe you're listening to this and you are male. Um, or there's a lot of male energy going on around your wedding. Um, I'm not saying that it is men, but it's that kind of masculine energy. So it's all about logic and structure and conformity, doing things the, I'll say doing things the right way, because I'm not saying that <laughs> masculine energy is doing things the right way, but it's that kind of set way of doing things. So this happens here, this happens there. Um, yeah that kind of set approach for doing things so I kind of feel that maybe your wedding is maybe more traditional um, yeah more of a kind of yeah traditional type of wedding because the Hierophant here is about kind of institutions and um, doing things kind of the way things have been done so it's kind of very traditional approach to doing things um, and you've got the emperor here which is 
It is, uh, it's right. Use logic and structure to increase your success and get organised. A firm, comp but compassionate leader. So um, the emperor is telling you to get organised. You've got this big event coming up. Um, you've not lot got. You've not got long to go. So make sure you've got everything ready. Um, yeah, try and uh, run through the day and make sure you've not missed anything. Um, and we've got. Um, got here the seven of cups yeah um, and this card is often to do with kind of indecision having too many choices to make um, and also like kind of daydreaming or having your head in the clouds but I think when it comes to weddings it is more of that kind of um, I've got to choose this I've got to choose that um, I need to decide what to do next do I want this color do I want that color how many guests there's just so much going on that sometimes it's quite difficult to make a decision but if you do things in a very structured and logical way like the emperor or the hierophant is suggesting then you should be able to make those choices because obviously it's very important to have everything uh, organized and sorted well um, and you've got the yeah, so you've got kind of the th three of spring here as well, which is the equivalent of the three of wands. And this is about planning your next steps with an eye to the long term. Have patience. There are more good things to come. Satisfaction from a job well done. <laughs> so this one again, yeah, um, plan. Plan your next steps. So get organised, plan, know what you're doing, um, have a structure, um, but also have yeah, it's like saying I have patience because obviously you've got to wait for your wedding to happen. So maybe you're trying to hurry it along and want to get there quicker. But all good uh, good things come to those who wait, I think is one of the, the saying. And we've got, um, we've got this one, obstacles and challenges. So, I mean, maybe you've overcome obstacles and challenges to be where you are now maybe it's taken a lot to get you to this point in the planning process and the wedding actually happening um, or it could be saying that there are obstacles and challenges to come in your final weeks of planning because um, also here we've got the nine of spring and that says prepare for possible challenges that lie ahead so you know it's kind of saying that there is there may be some challenges coming up but if you're prepared then maybe you can not have the obstacles and challenges so it's kind of telling you that maybe the way you're approaching things could lead to um, maybe some challenges in the future um, it's like forewarned is forearmed um, or is it forearmed is forewarned one or the other um, whichever way around it is <laughs> knowing that there could be this coming up will get you thinking that what have I missed what have I forgotten what do I need to make sure I've organized so try to think of an example um, maybe you've hired um, a limousine to get you all from your house to the wedding venue um, have you thought about the roads that are around your house or around the venue um, will the limousine actually be able to get round those streets and those roads? You know, if you've got lots of tight curves, it might be quite difficult. Uh, little narrow country lanes, that sort of thing. So maybe this is getting you to think about what could be a problem. What have you not thought about? Um, it may mean that, you know, these problems won't occur, but at least you've thought about them and you've got um, contingency plans. Um, which I think is always important. Um, yeah, so kind of all in the organisation. Um, so we've got the waiting game. So like we had um, with the Three of Spring about having patience. Um, yes, waiting, waiting to get married. So um, if you've done a lot of the planning and you've, you just, yeah, you kind of wanted it to hurry up and happen, but everything happens all in good time. Um, well, this card comes up a lot every time I do uh, one of these readings about weddings this card will come up in one of the groups um, 
memories of love which is also the equivalent of the six of cups so that's your uh, kind of nostalgia card um, thinking about your loved ones you know there might be some people at your wedding who oh, be some people you would have liked at your wedding um, who are no longer with you or who can't be there um, so it's kind of looking back and thinking about the people that you love and who can't be there um, and also it's maybe meeting up with people you've not seen for a long time so people from your past um, you know old friends relatives you've not seen for a while and they're all coming and gathering for your wedding um, so that's what that card's all about it's about kind of you know uh, family friends nostalgia <laughs> um, yeah looking back at the past then we've got the Wheel of Fortune here. And uh, so this is about fate turning in your favour. So it's obviously a good time to be getting married because, you know, everything's kind of building up to this and happening for a reason. So this is a kind of good fortune coming your way um, and you've just got to, got to roll with it while it's happening. Um, And we've got, there we go, we've got this one, victory and success. This is like the equivalent of the six of wands. So everything you've planned and worked hard for is going to pay off. So if you keep yourself calm and you look ahead to avoid any challenges that may come your way, um, there's going to be a successful event at the end of it, um, which is nice to know. <laughs> but this card is about the effort that you've put in. Um, so this isn't like um, unexpected success, this is hard work for success, um, which I think is all the better. But if you've worked for it and you've got it, then it's yeah well deserved. And we've got here the Hermit. And this one's come up. This is find or be a mentor, take a break from society, a commitment to your spiritual growth. So maybe with all this um, planning that's been going on, you've taken your focus away. Well, you've taken your focus outwards instead of inwards. Um, and this card is kind of maybe reminding you that you need to still work on yourself and your spiritual growth. Um, you know, because things do get in the way <laughs> of, you know, your spiritual practices. Um, you know, for example, if I'm I'm really busy and I know I shouldn't, but I do um, I forget to do a meditation, and because I just say oh, it's not got time, or I do it before I go to bed and I fall asleep. Um, but it's finding that time to fit these things in, and actually meditating's a really good thing if you've got um, a lot going on with the wedding. It's that mindfulness, taking a step back, thinking about um, what's going to be happening. Um, yeah. And also help kind of clear your mind and maybe if you have got any problems coming up um, the act of meditation can help you find the answers so um, yeah so that's kind of yeah so don't um, neglect your spiritual growth through all this wedding planning you've got going on um, so we'll look at the oracle cards we've got here the compass and I like the fact that she's almost got a kind of a similar similar look here to the Wheel of Fortune um, and this one is like well, you're entering uncharted territory and can expect wonderful new experiences to stay on the highest path of your destiny you'll need to keep your compass to true north have faith and you will never be lost so this is kind of almost like a spiritual card as well it's about what's your soul's calling what's your destiny um, you know kind of going inwards and finding out what that is um, but also in a sense with the the weddings um, you are entering uncharted territory if you've never been married before um, you know it's getting married is a whole amazing experience so um, yeah you can expect a, a wonderful experience with that and we've got here coming to life Again, I think that's really a good one for getting married. So something beautiful is being born in your life. A long held dream is beginning to show signs of life. 
Now is the time for reverence and awe. Allow spirit to show you the best form for manifestation of this dream. All you have to do is show up. So this is almost kind of linked really. You've got this setting your compass to manifest your dream life and spirit here helping you come to life and um, yeah, live it, live that dream that you've got. Um, and we've got here, kind of an interesting card, the goblin, the wounded human ego. So this is a warning to watch out for ego-based actions and negativity. So perhaps there's a mismatched dynamic that's appeared between you and someone. Um, and it's kind of saying about, don't rise to it. So send, send love, divine love to the situation to make the goblin go away. Um, I always think about um, the film, The Labyrinth, you know, the one with David Bowie in, um, where at the end, to kind of break the spell of the goblin, she goes, you have no power over me. <laughs> um, so it's kind of that, just don't let um, this kind of negative energy that may be coming around you take hold. Just throw love at it and it'll go away. So uh, yeah, maybe it's partly to do with these obstacles and challenges that are maybe coming up maybe it's the it's the goblin <laughs> making itself known but uh yeah send it love and it'll go away <laughs> and the last card i've got for you here is birth and rebirth so again this is inspiration and new life um you've come far and you're at a place to celebrate your ideas um Yeah, celebrate your ideas and all things are new. So it's that kind of, yeah, so I think what I was kind of saying is like, you know, you go sometimes getting to a point where you're birthing this idea or whatever it is, this wedding can be tricky, can be kind of almost painful or, you know, difficult. But once you've got over that hump and you've got this thing, um, it's all just and new and wonderful and it's a bit like this one so the coming to life so this birth rebirth coming to life um this kind of new chapter that's happening um that's going to be coming up um yeah you've just got to got to embrace it and uh yeah go with it so um there we go that's all i've got for you group one i hope some of it made sense um I say if you do like it, please do give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing. And uh, yeah, good luck with the wedding planning and the wedding. And I will see you all on another video. Okay, bye for now. Hello, group two, and everyone who picked the lovely Amasith here. So I've got some tarot cards at the start, and then I've got some oracle cards to give you some advice at the end. So we've got Queen of Summer. Three of Autumn, Princess of Summer, Prince of Winter, Ace of Wands, Six of Wands, Ace of Cups, Seven of Pentacles, Patience and Planning, Truth, Do Your Harvest, New Beginnings, Stag, The Bee, commitment and strength. Okay. So, I see you've got here two aces here. Let's start with these. And these are, they're kind of like the new beginnings, um, but you're being offered you're being offered these new beginnings. Um, so the Ace of Wands is kind of very creative. Um, and they're kind of like doing, you've been offering a spark of an idea. Maybe that's what that one is. And um, the Ace of Cups is about, kind of it's more of the emotional card and emotional fulfillment. Um, uh, what are you going to do with these gifts that you're offered um, so it's up to you to take what's being handed to you um, and then plant these seeds of the ideas 
um, to see what they're going to grow into. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like, what do you do with this? You're being given it, but it's only you can take it and do something with it. Um, so I mean, maybe in terms of the wedding, you've you've um, been offered all these kind of ideas and emotional support, and it's up to you to decide um, if you're going to take what's being offered to you um, and use it to, you know, pre prepare your wedding um, and plan it successfully. Um, yeah, and see what it it grows into, maybe something special. <laughs> I mean, you've got here the seven of pentacles, so he's kind of planted those seeds and he's waiting for them to grow and mature so that he can harvest them. So, um, you know, it's that kind of like the waiting game kind of thing in a sense. Um, you know, he's just waiting for it to happen. <laughs> and we've got here also a kind of same card, different deck, patience and planning. Um, so yeah, it's that, you know, waiting patiently um, but planning for the future as well. So, um, I mean, maybe you need to think financially. I mean, weddings are expensive, so maybe this is about financial planning as well. Maybe you need to think about um, where the money's coming from or, you know, what have you got saved up for after the wedding? Um, you know, do you need to wait and have your wedding later to you've matured your money <laughs> um, I mean, it could be that I mean maybe you need to just wait a little bit longer um, but yeah it's kind of impatience and things um, we've got here I'm gonna look at these two Queen of Summer and the Princess of Summer um, listen to your heart, intuitive insights, you can trust taking care of others, perhaps too much, or a new relationship or emotional experience, invitations to social events, compassionate friend you can share your concerns with. So this could be your, could be your mum or your bridesmaids, this could, this could represent um, people in your life. Um, so the Queen of Summer is you know, loving, comforting, emotional, intuitive. Um, and the Princess of Summer, a gentle, sensitive, kind, the experienced. Um, so it's like a kind of a younger version of the Queen of Summer. And this is kind of like an emotional and loving energy that you've got coming from these cards. So they're about compassion and nurturing and taking care of people. So perhaps you're somebody who does a lot for other people. Um, but maybe you need to kind of put your needs first as well to nurture yourself um, sometimes if you do too much it can take it out of you um, you need to think about yourself as well as others but yeah it's got a very loving comforting energy here so yeah hopefully that's yeah it could be coming from you lot group too it's just kind of yeah because we've got this, you know, with the Ace of Cups and and these cards. <clears throat> and we, yeah, I think you're a creative person as well. So um, here we go. Here we've got the Three of Autumn. Follow. You, I mean, this is kind of career based, but it says you're compensated for creative talents, but maybe. You're using your creative talents in the wedding planning um, for your wedding. So I think whereas group one might have been quite a more traditional wedding, I think group two, I've got a feeling that you're more, more kind of the DIY, maybe more kind of yeah, the DIY bride. Maybe you've got more of a hands-on and it's a bit more, you know, done your way. You have lots of your own little um, details and um personalization and you're good at making things so you're making favor boxes and you're making signs and invitations and all those sorts of things so yeah I think you're all very hands-on 
um, and your wedding's going to have that kind of very gentle, loving togetherness as a kind of a, you know, everybody joining in and helping out to make things and yeah, very personal. And we've got here the truth card and this is the equivalent of um, judgment in other decks. So this is a very big energy card and this is talking about a spiritual awakening and clarity, revelations of truth and cosmic consciousness. So <laughs> really big ideas in this card. Um, and it's about evaluating your past and what you've learned. Um, but it's saying that significant change must be made, um, but to take your time um, and use wise judgment because it could have far reaching consequences. So maybe there's something that you've been thinking about or something big that you've not made a decision on because it is, it would have a big effect on things. You know, maybe you want to move across the country or across the world or change jobs or you know start a spiritual career um but just getting you to maybe take your time and use your judgment when you do this because it's it's going to be big whatever decisions you've got and in the way we've also then almost kind of goes round and leads to new beginnings so it's about a great new adventure is waiting for you um, and this can show up when there's a significant inner change happening um, like the truth card so again it's like choices need to be carefully pondered to proceed with wisdom thought and care and uh, you know a lot of people are afraid of change um, it's hard to take that leap of faith um, and so going into your wedding it's it's a big change and maybe you feel like you're taking a leap of faith in your partner or in your suppliers um, but it is a new beginning and uh, yeah you're taking this leap of faith into your married life and seeing where it takes you and we've also got here material harvest and this is following on from planting your seeds waiting for them to grow and waiting patiently this is kind of it's coming to fruition you know everything you've worked towards um, all your planning, all your making, everything is coming towards this moment when you kind of reap <laughs> what you've sown um, and you've, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, kind of a success and just everything you've done is just happening. So when you get to your wedding day, it's, it is like your material harvest because everything you've done has come together. And we've got this one the six of wands which is um yeah it's kind of this is the victory card and this is all your hard work paying off um and you're going to be rewarded and celebrated for everything that you've done so it's your hard work um that is that is guiding you to success um but you've got to keep keep working at it um you know if you take your eye off the off the goal or the prize or what you're working towards you could you know go off course so as long as you stay the distance stay on course then um, you've got victory and success coming your way and we've got here the prince of winter which we've not looked at. So intellectual, determined, focused, impulsive. So this could be your partner, or it could be somebody in your life. It could be a child um, who's, yeah, who's just in your life. You know, this is could relate to somebody. Um, but it's also saying about seek out an intellectual solution to your problem. Um, you need to act quickly and decisively or sudden or unexpected changes. Um, so it could be any of these things happening. So, um, I mean, I don't see any sudden changes happening with any of the other cards in this spread. It all seems to be quite considered and planned and 
you know, you've got your idea, you've got success, you're waiting for it to happen, you're planning, um, and a lot of kind of lovely energy in this card and the new beginnings and the truth card, it's about <clears throat> taking things slowly. So um, I just think this card could relate to a person in this sense, in this case. And so down to the kind of oracle cards we've got here. So this one's a lovely wedding card. <coughs> so this one came out for you, so commitment. So this is card. So this card is indicating the natural evolution of a relationship from its inception to a literal or metaphorical marriage. So um, in this case, with it being wedding related, it is going, it is the literal marriage. Um, so this is <laughs> came out perfectly for you. Group two. And then we've got this one, number 44, strength. So, you know, your ideas could be being tested and defined and relationships are being deepened. Um, nothing can make you kind of shift off your course and anything is possible with effort and reliance on a higher power. Um, so in a sense, it's, you know, like this one, just keeping you, keeping yourself going. It's your hard work that's, yeah, your hard work and strength um, will lead to successful outcomes. And um, we've got here the bee. So the bee is a reminder that hard work and um, firm commitment to building the dream and a sweet outcome is assured, <laughs> like the victory card. Um, so it's a symbol of luck. So it says to expect miracles. It's very nice. Um, but it's about you, you creating your own luck. So effort is essential to make your dreams a reality, um, which the effort you're putting into your wedding planning, you are making your dreams a reality. Um, but this is a, a fortunate omen, apparently, as the bee. And the last one is the stag, which is about taking pride in all you do, but taking pride without arrogance. Um, so are you following a higher path with integrity? Um, like looking for the highest good in things, um, highest good in your planning, highest good in your marriage. Um, but yeah, be, pri be proud of what you've achieved um, because it's, it's all going to come off really well and you're making this wonderful commitment, uh, your new beginnings of your married life together. And yeah, all looks good. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching this um, I hope some of this resonates with you and it made some sense um, if you like what you've heard and seen then do please give it a thumbs up and please think about subscribing and good luck with the wedding planning and I will hopefully see you all on another video okay bye for now okay hello to everybody who picked group three and this floor right um, so I'm going to do some tarot first and then I will go on to some um, oracle cards. So we've got harmony, patience, fertility, awareness, my old major arcana cards here, <laughs> um, four of wands, ten of cups, eight of cups, the Devil, another major arcana, King of Autumn, Strength, Nine of Autumn, Five of Spring, Love, can't see that, Love, Burden, Sacred Pool, and Coming Apart, okay. can see all those. Okay, so we got group three. So firstly, there is a lot of big energy here because you have got six major arcana cards. So there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of big energy going on at the moment. So kind of running up to your wedding, um, might be big, big things happening or maybe big changes that maybe you need to make um, along this journey. So um, 
We do have some cards that I would expect to come up when doing a reading involving weddings uh, with harmony here and, and these two, um, which are very happy cards. Um, the Four of Wands is often called the, the wedding card um, or the marriage card and it's like a, a, a yeah, wedding celebration going on here and then you've got the Ten of Cups which is kind of a happy family, the completion of the, the cups suit um and the, yeah kind of like happiness and fulfillment so you've got those cards here which is really good um so we're going to start with this one actually fertility and this is the equivalent of the empress in other decks so and this card is representing femininity mother earth um like giving birth to new ideas, abundance, prosperity, children, love, etc. So, and this is kind of telling you to use gentle care with people around you um, and also gentle care on any problems that you've got. Um, it's not a time for being dominating or bossy. Um, it's a time for using, you know, your feminine femininity instead of this instead of masculine energy so yeah it's kind of love and kindness and um that sort of approach to anything you've got coming up with the wedding because obviously it is a there will be challenges and things that will happen along the way because it is um it can be a stressful time it shouldn't have to be but it can be so approach everything with this calm and feminine and gentle gentleness um to all things that you that are happening and the people around you um and you've got here the five of spring and this is you can see the two little kind of fairies here and they're, they're tussling over something and it's about little quarrels and disagreements and things like that so um, again if you use this kind of gentleness and to resolve problems um, it will be a lot nicer <laughs> um, we've got here patience and this is the equivalent of temperance as well in some cards so this is about the need for moderation, self-control when dealing with others and yourself. Um, so it's kind of all linking in with this um, treating nicely with, with people, you know, blend and balance the physical and the spiritual. Listen to others' ideas and thoughts, uh, learning to work together. Um, so again, counteracting the quarrels and disagreements of the Five of Spring. Um, maybe listen to the other person's ideas. Um, I think if you actually listen and take a moment to pause and actually hear what they're saying, rather than just waiting to get your piece, um, you might find that there's some good ideas there that you want to incorporate um, and would actually make things more harmonious. Um, We've got here awareness, which is the equivalent to the magician. I love all these circles. You've got a big circle here, and these big circles here. <laughs> um, and this one is telling you that you've got all the knowledge and the information you need. So you need to tap into this power to manifest your dream wedding. Um, use affirmations and meditations um, to kind of tap into the knowledge that you already have within you. Um, yeah, because it's uh, raw, everyone's connected to this divine energy, um, so it's all there for us, us to harness. So, um, meditation's a very good way of, kind of maybe finding answers and solutions to any questions or problems you've got. And we've got the devil here we'll cover up some of the nudity on it <laughs> um, and this card is um, 
I mean, it may look a bit frightening at first, but this is kind of telling you um, that there may be some situations that are dragging you down. Um, maybe you feel helpless to change something. Um, it's asking you if you're overindulging um, or overspending, which can happen when you're planning a wedding. Um, but this is something that you're doing to yourself. Um, and so it's something that you can be released from. You know, you can stop overindulging. You can start saving money instead of spending it. Um, you can release these bonds um, of feeling trapped um, yourself. Um, and it could be that for some of you, maybe there's some manipulation or controlling behaviour happening to you or around you. Um, and this is kind of, you know, letting you know that there could be some unhealthy behaviours happening at the moment or could happen in the run up to your wedding day. Um, you got this one here, the Eight of Cups. Um, and this is about walking away from something that no longer serves you. Um, I, I mean, it could be anything. It could be um, the people in your life. It could be job. It could be ideas. It could be an attitude that you've always had. It could be this overindulgence or overspending. It's something that now's the time to... Uh, walk away from it um, but I say that might be for some of you not all of you um, as I say this is a general reading so there might be elements that are for some people who've picked this group and elements for others that have picked this group um, so don't worry if anything I say is like oh no I don't want to walk away from anything um, maybe that card's not for you or maybe it's something you find in a few weeks that Oh yeah, I did leave that behind. I didn't need that. So maybe in a small way it was, but um, yeah, just take what resonates from this reading. Um, and we've got here strength. The grace and inner strength needed to overcome challenges, the power of kindness and forgiveness, time to embrace how wonderful you are. <laughs> So again, we've got that kindness um, coming through that we had with patience and fertility. Um, yeah, so this is, yeah, treat others as you would like to be treated yourself. So it's telling you there is strength within gentleness. Um, you're a caring soul, but you need to be able to stand up for yourself as well. But you can do this in a gentle way. You don't have to be aggressive with it. Um, and you can overcome challenges through grace and willpower. So, you know, this is about gentle strength um, to get through whatever challenges may come your way in the next few weeks or months in the run up to your wedding day. And we've got this card here, Nine of Autumn. So this is about reward yourself for all your hard work, being happily and successfully self-employed cherishing your time alone so lots of things going on with this card but in terms of the wedding planning so you know reward yourself for all your hard work so everything that you've done everything that you've planned um, it's maybe time to uh, to take a break and give yourself some sort of reward and actually the wedding will be the reward as well all the wonderful times you're gonna have with your friends and family and we've got this one, the King of Autumn. So this could be somebody in your life who's compassionate, accomplished, charismatic, gifted. Um, as I say those words, you might instantly think of somebody, in which case this card is representing that person. Or it could be um, telling you that you need to be assertive, um, maybe use this gentle strength to uh, get across any points that you need or any ideas that you have. Um, everything going your way it says <laughs> so yeah so it's either a person and you'll know who that is or it's it's telling you that you need to um, have a bit more um, assertiveness but don't be assertive in the way that you're gonna get into quarrels and arguments use this gentleness to 
make your point and also listen the patient's card and we've got here harmony we pointed out at the beginning which is the equivalent of the lovers so um yeah this is about well love between people and you know this kind of bond um with anything in your life it's that kind of partnership and harmony um, from two people or two ideas or two business partners but I mean obviously in this sense because it's wedding related it's that harmony between uh, you and your partner uh, they're getting married and I've already pointed out these ones the wedding card and the fulfillment card so I'm going to look at these ones because these are all very interesting um, I'll move them up uh, oracle cards that came up for this group so I'm going to start with this one obviously these cards all relate to some of you and not all of you but this card is about putting an end to something that's no longer working for you and it's asking you to think has a commitment been broken do you need to change course because you're taking on more than you can handle is there a partnership that's not in balance anymore so you know is there not this harmony is there not this balance here um so breaking away may be the best thing don't chase after something that no longer serves you so you know for some of you maybe this card will come into play maybe it's that walking away or breaking these bonds that are tying you to something that no longer serves you so a lot of thought is needed here um, to work out what could need to change and what you need to leave behind um, and then this one is the sacred pool I do love the imagery on these cards <laughs> this is about focusing on self-love and self-esteem again it's that like the fertility and the patience it's that love for yourself and that kindness and it's about reflecting back who you are so and it says reflect by the sacred pool and be at peace act with surety and confidence success shall be yours so um oh, where's that other one um not know where it is now but yeah so um yeah so success yeah so i'm thinking of this one i think like this inner strength to overcome challenges and again that's what it's saying about having this confidence to overcome things for success and then we've got here burden Um, and this card is asking you what burdens are you carrying on this life journey look at your commitments and responsibilities are you clinging to unhealthy relationships out of fear maybe you need to think about this one or these cards here again it's all kind of linking in um, yeah an unhealthy relationship could be what's the devil card that kind of tying you into things that like bad habits um that sort of thing um are you trying to prevent others from being hurt so are you trying to you know say smother them with love <laughs> but by not letting them live their own life because you're trying to protect them um you know it's not going to help them in the long run they need to learn from their own mistakes um you need to yeah release others to their own path leave unnecessary burdens you have the strength to carry what is yours again it's bringing in this strength again and then the last card here is love and this one is um, about showing kindness and compassion to all you meet so again it's a bit like the um, patience and strength cards so this marker reminds you that you're as connected to all of life as it is to you and that you're responsible to be the steward of the love of the god goddess love is without conditions it is respectful mindful sees all life as sacred and acts in accordance love reminds you that this very planet is a living being 
Love is the very essence of the divine in you and it sees the divine in others. This is the time to see through the eyes of love and always ask, ask before you act. What would love do? The answer will always bring you extraordinary power. This marker is a very fortunate and transformative omen. So, I think it's a very nice finish to this reading, um, which is basically telling you to act with kindness and love. Um, I think it's eventually what all the cards are leading up to. Um, and if you always act in that kind, gentle, um, loving way with your inner strength to overcome things, break free from habits and people that are bad for you, walk away from things if need be, then um, yeah, all will be well and it's going to lead to um, a very happy life. So there you go, group three. Um, I hope some of this resonated with you. Um, some, might res some bits might resonate with some people, some bits might resonate with others, but I hope there was something there for you all. Um, and yeah, if you like this reading, please give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing. And uh, good luck with the wedding planning and I hope you have a wonderful wedding and a wonderful life. And hopefully I will see you all on another reading. Okay, bye for now.